Hello again, everybody. It's your old pal, Guardian Enzo, coming to you live on tape from springtime Kyoto, Japan. Getting ready for Sakura season and the maniacal influx of tourists, which is going to be truly maniacal this year because even outside of peak season, it's been crazy. There's a ton of revenge tourism going on in our fair city. And a new mayor just came in and uh, he's pledging to uh, try to do something about it. So uh, that's only been pledged in Kyoto pretty much every year for the last four decades. So we'll see if anything happens. Anyway, it's season preview time. And uh, I'm happy to be back with you again to talk about spring 2024. Spring is, as you know, if you're a veteran of anime or certainly of LIA, uh, as a rule, the biggest season of the anime year, and the, often the best, but usually along with fall, the biggest. Uh, and this year, by my count, when I started doing my preview, it was 54 series, uh, which is a ton, but not an extraordinarily large amount by the standards of the last few years anyway. Uh, I would say that's pretty close to average. Last year we had 52. What was exceptional about this year is, last year is, of those 52, I ended up previewing 22, which is a much, much higher percentage than my usual one-third, roughly. And uh, as well, I would say what's unusual is uh, this year I'm previewing 19, but... Of those 19, probably at least 12 or 13 are pretty much shots in the dark for me. Uh, so last year I had a ton of shows in my top two expectations categories, which were uh, which are highest expectations and mid-table. I had 10 shows in spring last year in those two categories. This year it's uh, only half that. In fact, last year, I'm sorry, last year I had 14 shows in that uh, in those top two categories. This year I only have seven, which means 12 of the 19 shows are in the modestly interested. Now, of course, there's always a chance that one or two of those modestly interested shows are going to come through and be great, uh, which would be wonderful if it happens, but you can't really count on that. So some seasons have quantity, some have quality, and um, this one is more on the quantity side, I would say. Uh, the greatest seasons have both, but this one, I think, falls more on the quantity side. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into spring 2024. Uh, the usual rule of thumb applies. Uh, most of my... Uh, I, I preview everything on the website, the written preview, which is linked below. That is more of a breadth, uh, widespread, a uh, wide blanket where I cover a lot of things in, in brief. This one will be more about depth where I'll talk about a few shows, fewer shows, but in more detail. And we'll start with, um, well, three sequels because it's three sequels of the shows that I'm sure I'm going to cover this season. And then that, that's it. The first one is Boko no Hero Academia 7th Season. Again, it's a Boku leading the way. This time it's uh, Boku no Hero Academia. Uh, seventh season. You know, there's been six seasons of Hiroaka, and they've all finished in my year-end top ten list. So for me, that's uh, that's about as consistent as it gets. There's certainly been no other series in the history of LIA where uh, we've had uh, six seasons in the top ten. There's been a little luck factor involved there in that uh, the best seasons of Boku Hero Academia have come in strong years, and the lesser seasons, which might have missed out on the top 10, have happened to be in weaker years. Last year was a perfect example. Sixth season, one of the best, arguably the best season in arguably the best year that anime has had in the past half decade. So uh, this time... It's a certainty that 24 is going to be weaker than 23 as an anime year. I mean, I know we're only in spring, but it's a certainty to me. There's no way it can catch up the gap that already exists between 23 and 24. Uh, in terms of Hero Aka, I would expect this season to be weaker than the six if I had to bet on it, because I think the material, uh, there's some very good material here, but it's 
among the most controversial in the manga for a reason. Uh, I think he's a little bit more inconsistent than what came before it. We're also kind of going into uncharted territory for me because we're going past the point in the manga where I've read. I stopped uh, at some point a while back in order to just go with the anime kind of fresh from here to the end. So we're going to be getting into some uncharted territory for me, actually. And also, we have another movie coming out. And traditionally, when there has been a Hero Aka movie coming out in the same year as a season of the show, we've tended to have a little bit of suffering on the production side so it certainly wouldn't shock me if that happened this time around but it's hero Aka and as such six for six you can't you can't knock that record i expect this is going to be a pretty strong season next up kurshitsugi uh kishuku gakohen uh which is the public school edition is the english version of that Curse of is not a show I have always loved, but at its best, it is a show that I think is very, very good. It has a really dark and conflicted, uh, complex storyline. Uh, Chell is, uh, Ciel is a, a very good protagonist, in my opinion. Uh, Sebastian is a very good antagonist. Um, there's a very complex, tragic story at the heart of this series. It gets bogged down in a lot of fluff and it tries a little too hard and certain characters like Grell particularly annoy the hell out of me. But at its best, this series is very, very, very good indeed. I think Book of Circus is the best arc for me, but this arc is very good. And uh, it is sort of a Hogwarts arc, it's true. It's, it takes Tiel takes to, uh, to school undercover. But because of the nature of this series, it's kind of Victorian motif and the, the, the age of the main character uh, and just the general aesthetic. The general aesthetic of the show lends itself to the school, uh, school arc much better than other series that have gone down this road. So I have not read this portion of the manga, but generally speaking, the fans seem to like it very much. We do have a new director, Okada Kenjiro, who was the director who worked, a lot of his work is at Shaft, which worries me a little bit, but uh, a lot of times you'll see Shaft veterans kind of lose some of that over-mannered uh, Shaftisms when they leave the studio, so that's my hope is that's going to be the case here, because the last thing Black Butler needs is more of that kind of Shaft fluffery so hopefully hopefully we don't get too much of a shafty season uh we'll see i mean for example uh call of the night yofa kushi no uta uh another show by a, a shaft expat that kind of outgrew shaft you could say stylistically and i think i think the style of that show is is far beyond anything shaft has ever done in my opinion so hopefully we're kind of looking at the same thing with Kurshitsugi. And that, unfortunately, is it for uh, highest expectations for me this season. And uh, that takes us to the mid table. And on top of the mid table is uh, Shinigami Bochan, Tokuro Maid, third and final season. Although it's not officially the final season, it's the final season. Um, the Duke of Death and his Black Maid. So, um,. This is a series, I really like the manga a lot. I don't think the manga is a masterpiece, but it's very good. And with a traditionally animated and beautifully drawn adaptation at a really top-notch studio, could have been a pretty high-end anime. It's It could have been really something beautiful. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we got JC Staff, who pretty much is the, uh, they're the Daiso of anime studios at this point. When they win a contract, it's because they come in cheap, and a lot of what they do is 100% CGI, and it's not like really high-end CGI either. Uh, and that's pretty much where we are with Shinigami with Bochan. What it makes up for that is having very good soundtrack, and generally speaking, some good background art. So, I mean, it's not a disaster visually. It's not what it could and should be, but, you know, it's not a disaster, so... Uh, the series ends well. It's well written. It should be a very satisfying conclusion. Uh, and so that one, not a great season for rom-com 
in contrast to last spring, which was maybe the best rom-com season ever for me. It certainly was. Um, so that's, that's what I have pretty high expectations for. And that's really it for me in terms of certainties this season. Everything else is uh, either stuff I know the material and don't love it or stuff where I don't know the material. Um, and so we'll kind of breeze through those a little more quickly. Uh, but the first one on that list is The Fable, <clears throat> which is a very well-regarded uh, sign-in manga uh, about um, uh, an assassin who gets ordered by the head of his uh, his syndicate to go to, to basically cool off for a year, go on uh, no killing to because he's drawing too much attention. He's too good at his job. Um, I would expect uh, you know the the reputation of the manga is it's very well written. Uh, we're getting this is from uh, Tezuka Productions, which has not traditionally been a really high end studio in terms of uh, budget. And the director is Takahashi Yosuke, who's 80 years old, which is kind of interesting. You don't often see directors of that age in anime in, in the theoretically the main role on a series. So there's really no way of, of telling how that's going to go. Uh, but based on the kind of high-end scores that the, the manga receives and the fact that it is a sign-in, I expect this to be at least pretty good. The most intriguing series, probably of the uh, of the unknowns for me, is Karasu wa Aruji wo Erabenai, uh, which is uh, based on a uh, based on a series of novels by Abe Chisato, not light novels, but actual novels uh, about a Tengu clan called the Yatagarasu. This uh, the series here, the anime, is based on the first novel. And it's a young Tengu who goes to serve a prince at the royal court. Um, you've got an up-and-coming talent, and uh, the director is uh, Kiyogoko Yoshiaki. Um, not a lot of experience as director, but has worked with some great people. Very, very good cast, including Neo Irino as the prince. And it's very rare that we see him in a lead role in anime these days, much to its loss, because I think he's one of the best seiyu around. Uh, so, and uh, Mutsumi Tamura is playing the boy, uh, so uh, she's very, very good at, at playing boys. So I, I think the casting looks good, uh, very interesting director. Um, it's Studio Piro, which again, while they don't usually do huge budgeted adaptations, they tend to do adaptations very well in terms of, uh, in terms of capturing the, the essence of the material. Narratively speaking, they tend to ace adaptations, so I would expect... Pretty good things here. This is my top sleeper pick of the season. It, it's the one show I see that could potentially actually be be great. Uh, at least I hope so. Uh, you know, I'm not looking at the fable. I don't know the fable. Of course, you know, should be should be should be something great. But I don't look at the fable and see uh, I, I don't see greatness there for whatever reason. Uh, whereas with this one, which the English, by the way, is called The Crow Does Not Choose the Lord. This looks to me like it has the potential for greatness to it. So the most interesting proposition of the season for me. And the rest of this category, um, Tanore Tonario Yokai-san. Uh, we know it's that niche, that that uh, Kyujitsu no Waramono-san niche that I just did a top 10 list on. This looks like a show that has the the all the ingredients in place for that. Uh, the wistful countryside setting, the Shinto, it has cats. Leiden Films is a studio that's been doing really, really good work lately. The story here is about uh, an old house cat, 22 years old, who suddenly evolves into a Nekamata, which is a yokai, uh, a cat yokai, which traditionally, according to legend, is one that evolves from an elderly normal cat so uh looking forward to seeing where this one goes jisan basan wakagairu is largely interesting for me because of the casting miki shinichiro and noto mamiko two great actors playing a uh, old couple who for whatever reason uh, revert back to their teenage selves uh, so you have two seiyu who are neither old people or teenagers playing a couple both as old people and teenagers, but that's anime for you. 
Uh, we'll see. The, it's a Gecko Studio, which is not... It's a newer studio. It does not have an extensive or impressive track record. But, you know, two leads that good. Uh, the manga pretty well regarded. We'll see where we go with that. Then we jump right into Modestly Interesting, which, as I said at the beginning, is the bulk of this preview. It's uh, 12 out of the 19 shows. If you're doing the math at home, that's almost 65%. Um, so, nothing here that I would call a huge sleeper, but we do have uh, uh, Kaiju number eight, which is a show that has, it's aptly named because it has a chance to be the next big thing and not every series has a chance to be the next Kaiju. This one does. Uh, I only know the manga a little bit. I don't find it to be great, frankly, but it's... Of an extremely popular battle shonen. It's got production IG behind it. Uh, it's had a huge PR push in Japan. Um, it's about an elite military unit. They're called sweepers. They're set up because uh, kaiju are randomly appearing across Japan and doing havoc. Uh, it kind of has all the boilerplate ingredients of a big, uh, big battle shonen hit. Uh, we'll see. You know, I don't think the manga is anything special, frankly, but it does have a chance to be a, a really, really huge hit. Could be the next big thing. I don't think it's going to be the next, the next big thing, but it could be the next big thing, and it'll certainly be a big thing. And if IG puts the, uh, you know, if they put the work in this that they did with Tengoku Daimakyo, which is one of the best adaptations ever, I mean, obviously, this that can only help it become even bigger commercially. Um, bartender, not a series, a, a, a sign in about a bartender who, you know, kind of your classic bartender story. There was an, an earlier version of it in 2006, uh, and the manga, of course, even older than that. I, I did not find the first one to be that riveting, frankly, but we'll see where it goes. Um, some other things, some shoujo. Another weekly Shonen Jump adaptation, Yozakura Sanchi no Dai, uh, Dai Sakusen, a Mission Yozakura family. A lot of people were wondering if this this anime would ever happen. It's kind of a mid Shonen Jump property, not a huge hit. Uh, so we'll see. It's uh, you know, like I say, a Silver Link Studio, probably a mid range budget with a good director, Minato Mirai. Uh, another one. Uh, that interests me is Kaito Otome to uh, Kamikakushi. And the reason this interests me, quite frankly, is because it's written and directed by Mochizuki Tomomi, who is one of the giants of the anime industry. Uh, has not always done great work, but his great work is truly great and has done so little in recent years. The fact that he's doing the both main roles with this series leads me to believe maybe he saw something in this that I'm not aware of. It's a web manga. Uh, as far as I know, it's not regarded as being any kind of work of great genius. It's about a couple of bookstore clerks who get mixed up with uh, uh, supernatural stuff when they're investigating uh, disappearances. So we'll see. Uh, Bokyaku Battery, another MAPPA series. This is another baseball series, which should normally be right up my alley. It doesn't seem to have any weird blue lock hooks or kinks or magical stuff. Uh, but just frankly, the manga, as far as I know, is... I don't read good reviews on the manga, frankly. Uh, but it's baseball, so I'll be giving it a shot. And then we have Oi Tonbo, um, which is uh, a golf anime... Uh, we've had a couple golf anime now, uh, and so I've been predicting for years that golf anime would finally become a thing, because there's a lot of golf manga. Golf is extremely popular. Hideki Matsuyama is becoming one of the big golf stars of the golf world, so it's even more popular in Japan than ever. Um, it looks like it's finally happening. We had Birdie Wing, which I hated, but, you know, it, it existed. Oitonbo, uh, there's a, a one or two more golf anime on the horizon. Uh, this one is about a young lady on an island who uh, takes up golf using her late father's three iron and only his three iron. That's the only club she has. And there's a retired golf pro there who takes her under his wing, his birdie wing. Um, we'll see. It's an old school manga. 
and uh it's interesting that it's getting i think the manga is 20 or 30 years old it's interesting that it's getting an anime now but again i think it's because uh golf anime is about to have a moment so i think that's why you see a series like oitonbo get an adaptation i would love to see weekly shonen jumps green green greens which is only on about 16 chapters someday get an anime which as a weekly shonen jump series it would if it survives long enough unfortunately i don't think it's going to survive long enough which is a shame because i think it's a probably my favorite golf thing currently running green green greens check it out but you better hurry because it better not buy any green green bananas it's going to be gone pretty soon uh tadaima okairi is a, a a bl series uh which unfortunately generally means pretty formulaic and tropey but this one is about a married couple with a kid so hopefully it avoids the worst of the tropes oh look it's kimetsu no yaiba um i don't have to talk about my relationship with kimetsu at this point you all know it um my hope is that this is better than the uh hashira event this is called the hashira training arc uh hashira gaikohan uh, I hope it's better than Swordfish Millage Arc because Swordfish Millage Arc was better than Xanax. Uh, next, uh, a remake of Spice and Wolf. Uh, wow, another old series, which a lot of people really love and did nothing for me the first time around, but I'll give it a shot again just to see if maybe my perspective has evolved over the years to the point where I can appreciate it in the way that I didn't long ago. Uh, Spice and Wolf, same actors... Different staff, different studio, passing on this time. Uh, and that's, there's a couple other miscellaneous stragglers in there, but those are the ones I would say are worth mentioning. And as far as series anime, I mean, that's that's the preview. It's a lot of shows, but nothing I see as being really spectacular. Uh, a lot of shots, a lot of wild cards, and a couple of sequel certainties. That's this season. Uh, but... Karasu wa Aruji wo Erabe Mai. That's the one I'd keep an eye on, frankly. Um, so I'm looking at that as my main sleeper, but Kaito Otome to Kamikakushi, I have to consider that a sleeper uh, because it's because it's Mochizuki. Uh, that's the only reason. OVA complete shut out. Uh, I'm thinking even of dropping OVA from the previews because at this point it's the exception more than the rule to have anything worth previewing frankly it's pretty much a dying a dying medium OVAs um theatrically spring is not traditionally a huge theatrical movie uh season but we have a couple here worth talking about one of them is uh Kuramu Kuramu Kurameru Kagari Kurameru Kagari which is by uh, an original by Narita Ryohogo, who is the Bikano Durarara author. Um, and another author named Sukahara Shigiyoshi, who's done quite a few things over the years. Um, modestly interested here. Uh, coal mining town, some kind of conspiracy thing. Has a bit of a steampunk vibe to it. We'll see. The one much more interesting proposition for me in the theatrical side is Look Back. Uh, Fujimoto Tatsuki knows needs no introduction. The hype train is off the tracks with him. Um, he did two one shots: this one and Sayonara Eri, both of whom got a ton of critical buzz and sold like hotcakes. I personally find Sayonara Eri the better of the two, and I think that will get a, a movie or uh, probably a movie at some point. Uh, but Look Back is um, a good series. I don't consider it worthy of a lot of the a lot of the grandiose praise it received, but it's it's good. It's interesting. Um, it's about two children who are draw manga and consider themselves rivals. They meet again in their teen years. Uh, there's repercussions for that. It has some some aspects of reflection on the Kyoto animation fire and that tragedy. Um, it's always full of, I find all of Fujimoto's works to be full of interesting ideas that are not fully realized. And I think that's the case with this, but, uh, on the right hands, uh, perhaps this could be, you know, in a way that Chainsaw Man felt a little 
sterile and safe as an animation of a Fujimoto work. I'm hoping this time we're going to get something that's a little more uh, in line with his aesthetic. Oshiyama Kiyotaka is the director. He's a young, interesting, kind of a bit avant-garde creator, so hopefully that will give this one a little more stylistic punch than the Chainsaw Man adaptation had. Interestingly, it's by Studio Durian, which is a relatively small, relatively new studio, which as far as I know, I, as far as I can see, has no direct links to MAPPA, which is interesting because the uh, the head of MAPPA had said not that long ago that he hoped he could have MAPPA adapt all of uh, Fujimoto's works. Uh, so it's interesting that this is by this studio, Durian. So look back. That one is coming June, June 28th. That'll be the one I'm much more interested in of the uh, theatrical releases this season. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up the spring 2024 preview. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, thank you very much for reading, as always. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you go to the website, there are uh, links there to support LA via Patreon or PayPal or Ko-fi or any other way you'd like to if you like what I do. Uh, it's uh, not an inexpensive proposition to keep the website going, so I, I always appreciate all that support very much. But again, uh, I'd love to see your comments below and uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, have a great spring. And as always, my usual admonishment because someone has to say it, so I'm, I'm going to take that burden on myself to be the one to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay frosty. Talk to you soon.